Joined by me now are two criminal lawyers, Karima Saad and Ari Goldkind. Ari, I'd like to start with you. Some of these offenses where mandatory minimums are being repealed are, in fact, violent offenses. For example, using a firearm in the commission of an offense, discharging a firearm with intent, discharging a firearm during a robbery. You know, shouldn't mandatory minimums stay in place when the offenses are violent? Well, that raises a great question, Christine, about the nuance in this debate. And there is very little nuance. People are either for it or against it, rather than looking for a middle ground. One of the big questions here is, do we trust, do we trust judges or do we not trust judges? And given some of the body politic today, the way people want the criminal justice system to move, people want incarceration to happen less, the question is, which people are those? Are they the people most vocal on Twitter and social media, or is it the ordinary average Canadian? But if somebody were to say to me, am I in favor of mandatory minimums? Mostly no, because it sort of handcuffs, pun intended, judges from doing what they feel they should. But at the same time, particularly for violent offenses, not necessarily drug-related offenses, getting into issues of addiction and other sorts of things. Some would say, well, shouldn't Parliament have a say in setting a minimum floor for somebody who commits an act of violence? The end of the story, though, is judges still should maintain some discretion to sentence the human being that's in front of them. Karima, what's your view on, on mandatory minimums? Is the government decision to repeal these particular ones a good thing, in, including those violent offenses? I think it's a good start. Um, it's important for people to understand that uh, as it currently stands, there are many appeals um, and many mandatory minimums have already been found to be unconstitutional. Um, so this is the government um, addressing some of that. And as far as a mandatory minimum goes, uh, I, I think the question to ask is, is it serving a productive purpose or is it a, a form of bloodlust because someone has committed an offense that is, is problematic? Um, and that's not to undermine the seriousness of some of these offenses, but uh, the, the research indicates that mandatory minimums don't actually... Uh, serve a purpose in terms of deterrence. Um, they can be counterproductive. And in fact, the, the data reveals that those who are most uh, affected uh, by these mandatory minimums uh, and end up overrepresented in prisons um, tend to be Black and Indigenous Canadians. And so that is an issue that repealing um, mandatory minimums is, is a start. Could either of you tell me an example of a case where mandatory minimums have been imposed in, in an unjust way? Um, I, know, I know there must be a number of examples, but just to give our, our viewers a sense of the flavor of when this is unfair. Who would you like to go first? Uh, Ari. Ari, let's start with you. So for me, I can come up with a number of examples, and I want to go back to your first guest for a moment about impaired driving. I think that's an important point to touch on when it comes to mandatory minimums, because remember, many people don't want mandatory minimums when it touches them in a certain way, but most people support mandatory minimums for murder or certain, certain kinds of sexual assault or sexual abuse. Or, for example, if you've gone out and been drinking and driving for the third time, there's not a, man, a massive outcry for that. So there's a lot of politics involved in this. But the short answer for me is it's different when there's a person who's very morally blameworthy. For example, let's use the bank robbery example, robbery with a firearm. There might be a shooter. And that shooter or that person who puts the gun to the bank teller's head, there may be a much stronger argument for a mandatory minimum there. Where I see the injustice is, and this is called party liability. You don't have to be the central person, but perhaps the getaway driver. Perhaps it's somebody who's been pressured or is under the influence. They would be exposed to the same mandatory minimum as the actual designer of the bank robbery carrying the gun. So when it comes to party liability or people caught up in something that don't have the same level of moral blameworthiness, that's where I see more kinds of injustice happening. Absolutely. And, and, I, and, and Karima, I'd love an example from you as well, but we're going to take that example uh, right when we're back from this commercial break. <laughs> 